OK, so now we're recording. OK, so I was just saying that there's an awful lot in this um, session, so please do try to look at it through the lens of, you know, would it work for me in my teaching? Would it work with my students um, and the needs that you have there or the setup um, that you're going forward with for for this academic year? OK, so there's a huge amount of technology tools in here. I'm not for one second suggesting that anyone should be using all of them or any of them. And um, again, it's what works for you. Um, and I'm going to show you some kind of practical hands on examples and um, that hopefully some of them might work for you or you could adapt them or even just generate some ideas. And um, so that's where I'm going with this. OK, so very quickly, I just want to recap and um, what flipped learning is. Basically, you tip traditional teaching and learning on its head. So your actual class teaching is um, completed in activities by the students when they're at home or when they're basically not during your your timetable class time. Your face to face classes are then used for more active learning, discussions, feedback, one to one support and, um, you know, kind of pushing students to think more or to develop their artifacts that they're working on for assessment. So that is flipped learning in a nutshell. Um, and just to scroll down then. I have some activities here and um, that are typical that work well for in the classroom or your face to face or for the remote learning section. So as I said, they're in the classroom, focusing on the active learning discussions, talking and um, asking questions, you know, really trying to, I suppose, push the learning um, a little bit higher on that. Also gives you more time for one on one support, you know, giving feedback working on the artifacts for assessment or even building those relationships or having check ins with students as to where they're at. Um, mm. for me, for the remote learning side of it, um, as much as possible, I would encourage video materials um, or short reading pieces. Now with that, um, you know, in general, I would recommend that the videos aren't more than five minutes long. Um, and I suppose to maybe think about it in the same way as we would for ourselves. If we were given a suite of videos, if they were an hour long, the chance of watching them all and engaging in them and um, diminishes the longer those videos are. So if the videos could be in short, sharp bursts and, um, you know, the, the engagement should be improved with the learning materials. Um, it doesn't have to be technology. It could be a piece of reading that's printed out on paper, goes home with the learners. They read it at home and um, but it could also be a piece of reading online. Um, so that's basically the kind of model um, and per topic um, we can break that down. So I just want to give you an idea of that. So there's a model here and um, it's from Crystal Kirch, but basically it's WSQ. So watch, summarize and question. Um, so basically she created this model where all of her lessons or topics have three short and video clips. So the three in total can range anywhere from five to 15 minutes. So that is your time for direct instruction. So that's your teaching time. So the students go home, watch their videos. There is an activity or a quiz or a quick check, or you know, you can ask them to kind of summarize it in a line, you know, describe what they watched in, in three words, whatever it may be. It depends on the, the subject matter there. And then at the very end, um, you will kind of ask them to either generate their own question on the material and, um, you know, have some questions for discussion when they come back in for the face to face, or it could be to create um, an artifact or to produce something. But that's basically um, a model there, and I think it could be very useful, um, again, dependent on the, the subject. So recently I completed um, a Teach Nimble um, program through FES. Really, really interesting. Um, but part of it was this um, planner for blended learning. And I have a copy of that and I can share it out. But basically it looks at breaking down, I suppose, knowledge or skill acquisition, um, collaboration, discussion, investigation, practice, um, and production and then some assessment opportunities with also space for the cell. So this the social and emotional well-being up the top. And um, I have this in a Word document so you could completely customize it. But the part that I really liked about it 
um, was the top there with the boxes where you could tick for insert in center live online or self self directed. Um, for me, if I was to use this, I would change it around a little bit. I tend to tr teach topics um, over six lessons, so I would probably go instead of Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, I would probably go with lesson one, two, three. Um, but that's just me. That's how I plan. Um, but that is there and I'll share that out after the session. Um, so with that, I just very quickly want to look at how some of the technologies fit into that model. Um, so here is a technology wheel. Um, so the acquisition phase is, I suppose, your first phase where you're introducing a concept or a topic to students. So this would, in a flipped model, this would be done at home. Um, so the students would watch your video, read um, a piece. It could be listening to a podcast, the kind of voice memo that you've created. Whatever way works for you to introduce or, or teach a topic and um, to start off. So there's there's tools in there. It could be an activity from Khan Academy, it could be a Nearpod lesson, it could be something you've created on OneNote. It could be a genially um, interactive where students can click through. It could be a PowerPoint with a vo voiceover. Um, it could be a video on stream, a TED Talk, a Sway, Wakelet, tons of opportunities um, there. And I will kind of walk through how to set a couple of them up today. And um, so on that as well, for the discussion side, um, which is going to be really critical at the moment, um, you know, kind of capturing that, I suppose, that connection with our learners that we're used to having when they're in front of us every day. Um, so some of the tools that could be useful for that, if you wanted to do it on video, um, you could use Flipgrid, you know, a channel in Teams for a conversation, or you could set up um, kind of a written template um, within Wakelet that kind of gives prompts and students respond to them um, and they can all collaborate on the on the one collection there. Um, for investigation, then we're looking at when learners kind of go off and explore their own materials that you've given them um, or do some of their own research around a particular area. And again, there's lots of tools there that are really useful for that. Um, collaboration then. So if you want students working on something in groups or pairs, um, again, kind of tons of way to do that with different tools producing their own artifacts and um, for me it's really important when I'm working with students that I get them to create rather than consume content and um, that's just the model that I have used um, and for me creating content is a life skill um, and I always try to kind of embed that in some way into my teaching and learning and um, so again there's tools there for that and then you know, kind of the ultimate teaching by practice. So getting students to do or complete tasks and um, they can be completed in some of those those tools that are there. It doesn't really matter um, which platform that you are using, whether it's Office 365 and kind of having your virtual learning environment in Teams or whether it's on Moodle. <clears throat> All of the tools will integrate um, or can be shared across both platforms. For me, what is really key is that it's that students are generally on one platform. So that will be an agreed um, platform with your staff team and, and coordinator. OK, so there are just some ideas again, kind of, you know, focus on on one tool, choose one topic um, and design it from there. You know, there there is no kind of class situation where using all of these together would be would be best practice it would just be too much um, and it would be overwhelming for both the teacher and the student when you're choosing the tool again just remember that it adds value to the learning or to the to the learning experience and um, it's not just because it's a it's a shiny tool but that's enough on the on the tools so i want to give an idea of some of that in practice so the first one i have here is a ted talk okay so the TED Talk is just one that I've picked off YouTube and I have used this um, with learners and it worked very well. So basically the learners went home with this video to watch. I have a graphic organizer here then um, and depending on what works for your learners in, in your center or program, 
they could um, enter into this graphic organizer online or it could be printed off and given to them to kind of go home and fill in as they watch. Um, but basically it encourages them to be and provides an opportunity for them to be accountable when they're watching the video. Um, so this graphic organizer should be filled in um, while students are watching the video, it comes back into class then and is discussed. And I've said that, so we will discuss and talk through your answers in the next face to face class. And then down the bottom, um, it's an oral um, comprehension exercise. So there's seven questions there that students would then answer after we've had the class discussion. And um, so that's an example of using a TED talk um, and how you would kind of flip the learning on that. So instead of watching the video in class, students go home with the video to watch. They have a graphic organizer to frame their thoughts around it. And then we discuss it in class back in um, and then they go home again to complete their assessment and then bring that back in. Um, but again, how you set that up, whether it's an assignment in Moodle, an assignment in Teams, whether it's through their one no notebook, it's possible to do that um, through all those those mediums. And um, for this, I want to really just focus on um, the actual activities um, for flipping your classroom. So with that in mind, and because I've given out an idea there, I just really want to look at, I suppose, where we're at at the moment. So where all of you are at. So I have a Padlet set up and I'm going to pop it into the chat. So if you click on that and then you should be able to click anywhere on the Padlet wall underneath the titles and add your own thoughts. And again, this is purely for ideation. It's coming up with ideas. You know, there's no good, bad, right, wrong answers here. But I just want you to think about um, the asynchronous activities that you could you could use to flip your classroom. So what ideas have you got um, for sending learners home at work, basically? Um, and if we could expand on those answers a little bit, it would be really, really useful if we could kind of use this opportunity to to share knowledge with each other. Um, then the next column is for the technologies for those activities. Then we're moving on to the synchronous, so the face to face um, activities in your classroom. And then we have technologies for those activities. And then the last one is any questions or thoughts or ideas that you're not sure about or anything that you'd like to tease out. Um, could you remind me again the difference between the asynchronicity and the synchronicity? Of course, the best way I think of to remember it myself is asynchronous is away and then synchronous is face to face in the classroom. So the A means they're away from you. OK, that helps. That's how I remember it. Anyway, OK. Anyway. Some really good ideas coming in there.
that activity there to go to the shop and take take pictures of food labels that works exceptionally well um you know i think there's something about giving learners the choice and um, to find their own materials to to work with i really like that okay so the introduction video in in flipgrid and um, so i have one of them here um, and i'll just give you a very quick look um, again for anyone that hasn't seen it and I'm really not a fan of popping myself up here. It's a little bit cringy, but your here goes. Um, I won't go through the whole thing. I'll just play this part of it. OK, so that's enough of that. Basically, I've added the URL to a tab um, at the top. So all I did in my Teams window was click on the plus button. Go to website and I pasted the URL in there. But to make that video in the first place. Go to flipgrid.com, single sign on with Office 365. And then I use the shorts video function to create that. So click on the shorts tab up the top. There's my my video there. You can see and um, but to record your video, just click on on record. Don't think it'll open in full here because I'm using my camera, but that's basically how you do it. And then you copy out the URL from there and pop it into the tab on on Teams. All right, so it doesn't have to be linked to a post or a grid or anything like that. You can just make little mini videos. So, so shorts make, are brilliant for mini videos. Are they limited on time or what's the time limit on that? 10 minutes. So you could pretty much make your, your teaching videos through that as well. You could make your teaching videos through that as well. There's a new function on the camera there. I can't show you at the moment, but basically you can split screen in your camera. So if you add a picture of like a PowerPoint slide or a page or a document or a mind map, you can actually bring up a page of instructions and talk through them at the same time as well. Can you bring up a whiteboard and talk through it? Yes. Yeah. OK. Yeah, actually, so you could actually, you could use that for maths. Actually, if you want to show your video, if you want to show the video as, uh, aspect, if you um, close your video out of Teams, just disable the video in Teams, you could probably use the video there. That's a in, good in idea, really good idea, Stephen. Thank you. Let me turn my camera Stephen? off and see if that works. If I actually just switched off our camera in. Um, Oh, Teams, yes. Yeah, That's a brilliant idea, idea, Stephen. Thank you so much. You're <laughs> I hope when I when I learn something or get a new idea. That's brilliant. Delighted with that. Thank you. So if I click on my options here, I can upload a video and, you know, I can record my screen and um, there's different there's different options there for that. But also in here in effects, I can make a board. So there we go with a maths one for you, Yvette. Oh, and half and half. Oh, lovely. So you can draw ahead or or do what you want to do um, on that with your with your board. Um, or you can choose whether you want to be on it or not on it at all. You can go with full screen. Mm. Um, completely, completely customizable there. So the other in things in here, you can add text. <clears throat> Today we're doing we're doing algebra. There we go. And um, what else can we do? So we can add different images or different things. You can pop a picture up and um, just by clicking there, you can do an upload. And um, there's your your draw. OK, so I'm going to I'm going to try this. Give it a go. All right, and on your screen, good luck. <laughs> Hang on now, where's my draw gone? Should work for me. OK, I want to draw. Not working for some reason. OK, 
There we go. Yep. So what was I doing? I was doing a 2x. Are you drawing with a mouse or what are you drawing with? Yeah, my pen's downstairs. <laughs> but even still with a mouse. But it's pretty good with a mouse even. It's not neat. too bad. So we have a 2x plus 3y equals 5. Um, but you, you get the idea there. Um, yeah. with, with a mouse, it's not it's not too bad. Um, but for anyone who has a pen there, um, you know, you can you can ink away on that. I wasn't expecting to use my pen, but there we go. Mm -hmm. um, so that is the idea for a Flipgrid short video. Um, so would that really, be better than the stream then, or because it has more functionality? Do you know if you're making making to do videos? Yeah, it it, it it really it really depends. I suppose for the advanced functionality, I would 100% recommend the Flipgrid camera. Um, you know, I, I did some demos of it recently um, out and about in, in a college. And I suppose one of the key things that people found with it was the quality of the recording was much, much better. Mm -hmm. um, and I find that as well. You get really good quality HD video from um, recording in Flipgrid. So it's really, really useful for that. And um, they would can be my, my two go to's. Can you embed that video in OneNote then? Yes. And that's only in the desktop app you can embed videos, isn't it? Because I think you can only put the link in on other bits. If you put the link in in the browser version, it will still embed. So if you just copy and paste the URL in, it will embed. Mm, it didn't work for a YouTube video last night, but maybe I wasn't on the, the right browser one. I'll, I'll try again. I did one this morning um, and I'll bring it up in a, in a second there, but I did just paste it into the to the browser and, and version. Embedded. Maybe, maybe I was doing it on the iPad. That could have been it. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't embed on the iPad. Probably, probably it. Yeah. Um, so that's the shorts video in Flipgrid. Again, we have free access there on limited storage. Um, and the beauty of that as well is that you can share all the videos that you create if students create them with a QR code for assessment, um, which has proven really, really popular um, with the EAs when they're reviewing video evidence. Um, so there are some of the benefits of that. OK, so I'm going to come back here to what I what I have. The next thing that I wanted to very quickly show, um, and I'm not going to go into much detail about it, but if you have an awful lot of your learning resources in Word documents, OK, you can very easily um, convert your Word document to a sway. And I'm just going to walk through the steps. You can have a play with it or a look at it in your own time if you think it would work for you. But basically in Word Online, click on the file tab. Click on transform and then transform to web page. OK, and I'm going to use the mountains version simply because my document happens to be about the Wicklow Mountains, but there's tons of different options in there. So it's just loaded. OK. So you can see here that instantly that's turned. Um, where's the rest of it gone? I mean, my picture hasn't come up properly there. It's in a queue, and um, so it, it will load. But it just kind of makes your um, makes your document look a little bit nicer or a little bit cleaner. And then if you want to edit it, if you just click on edit. Um, so you can kind of play around with it, move things around or decide um, how much space you want to give things. You can also add interactive videos um, in here as well. But that's how to go through the initial steps of transforming um, a Word document into a Sway. Um, and again, to kind of add or insert content, click on the plus and then you can add text, images, um, different media, so audio clips, video clips or images, or you can embed in here as well. And um, you can also upload from your desktop, but I'm not going to go into any more detail on that. But that's how you go about um, transforming a Word document. OK. So back here again. OK, so I've shown the TED talk 
Um, I just very quickly want to look at an activity here for communications. So it should load now in a second. Sorry, my internet's not, not playing ball here. I'm just going to refresh it. OK. So yeah, here's the video I put in from YouTube, um, Yvette. So I just did copy the, the share link and pasted it in to OneNote and it, it came up. Um, so that's the, the video there. So I would ask students to go home, watch the video um, about the author's purpose. And then I have an activity that I created in a Wakelet template down here. Now, again, this can be exported to a PDF and printed off. And um, so if you had a couple of students who either preferred working on paper or um, would like to kind of have a paper copy, that's no problem. You can very easily um, convert it and print it off. But basically the task here is to go off, conduct your own research and find um, examples of writing under four under the four categories of author's purpose. Um, so under persuade here, um, students will basically come in, edit the collection. Internet's very slow and I am plugged in. Scroll down and then they can add um, their piece that they found in here. So the first one there to persuade, they go off and find an advertisement, click on the plus button, and then they can either add um, an image that they've taken. So it could be an advertisement from a newspaper or from a magazine. Um, it could also be a YouTube advertisement video. Um, and then they can add some text on it as well to kind of give a comment um, on the advertisement that they found. But that's a really nice way of bringing a collection together. And you could ask students to do this independently so they would all have their own wakelet and um, so they can copy this template into their own account. Or you could do a group one so everyone in the class works on the same. And when you're doing that, students can't edit each other's work, um, but you can see who's put in um, which piece. So there's a couple of ways of doing that. Done. OK, so again, if you want to um, copy that out to print it off. Oh, sorry, click on the share button and you can export it as a PDF. It shouldn't take 60 seconds. That's not a very big one. OK. And there's a look at the at the PDF version if you wanted to print it off for students if they didn't if they didn't have their own. OK. So I just want to go back and make sure that I'm on track with what I wanted to cover. So flipped learning, I had a look at it already. Technologies in the wheel and um, I showed you the planning template. We had a look at Padlet. Do, do, do. OK, so I'm actually going to go ahead now and do a very quick screen recording with PowerPoint. So this is available in desktop PowerPoint. So the app. So open your blank presentation. Go to the insert tab. Click on screen recording. OK, and select your area that you want to record. Actually, I'm fine with just to hear for that. And then I'm going to click record. It will give me a countdown. I have my Word document ready to record. So in this video, we will look at text formatting. So on the home tab, you have 
five basic types of text formatting here. So to format the text, highlight the words that you want to change. You can change the font by clicking on the drop down menu. I'm going to change it to Arial. It's a nice clean text um, that you can use in your documents. I'm going to change it to size 14 font. And then to make it bold, so to make it stand out, click on the B, italics and underline. So there are the five main um, different types of text formatting there. So again, to turn them off, just go back, click on the U to get rid of the underline, the I to get rid of the italics and the B to take bold off. OK. Going to stop that there. Comes back to PowerPoint. Here's my video. So I'm going to right click on my video. Because I want to save media as. I want to save it on my desktop because I'm going to use it now in a minute. Now, so I'm going to minimize my PowerPoint and my Word because I don't need it for a minute. I have stream open here. OK, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to upload um, my video onto onto stream. Oh, I always forget that that button actually shows me a video. Sorry, apologies. <laughs> the, on the dashboard, so up the top. Plus button upload a video. OK, so it has the drag and drop. So here's my video that I just made in PowerPoint. Drag it across to stream. It's uploading there at the moment. So in the description, I'm just going to type in watch this video to learn about basic OK, so it's nearly there. OK, so that's ready to go. Processing. Does anyone have any questions while that's processing? No, but in, in theory, then you could set up a folder that has a mix of streams and your flipgrid shorts if for tutorial videos like. That's what I would do myself, yeah. Um, because both of them give me things sometimes, and um, dependent on dependent on what I want to what yeah, I want to do. Something on a computer you need screen record, and if it's something that's written. Yeah. Now you can you can screen record within um Flipgrid as well. So it does it does have that if you wanted to stay on the one platform. Okay. Um, you know, it's kind of I suppose it's it's a preference thing, really, you know. So that's done. So I'm going to come back and look at my content, my videos, because I want to add something else to it. OK, so here's my basic text formatting demo. OK. So, oh, it's Ashley. So the transcript will generate itself there so you can have um, closed captions on it. To turn them on, you just simply click on the double C um, on or off, but I've, I have them on there at the moment. Um, but a new feature, which is really cool, is this interactivity button. So you can add a form to your video. OK, so for anyone who would have ever used or been familiar with Edpuzzle, um, this gives you that feature. So I want to add a form. OK, so what I'm going to do is very quickly click across to my forms. And I'm going to go with new quiz. And it's going to be basic text formatting quiz. Add a new question. And it's going to be multiple choice. The five. text matching. OK, 
video. Okay, so that's going to be one. Bold. That's not right. Underline. Actually, I want to put them in in order. So that is the correct answer. So we need some dummy options in here. Okay, so I'm going to change. Oh, didn't mean to do that. I'm going to change underline to highlight. And then in the last one, I'm going to change um the font there just to resize just to make some some difference okay so taking the correct answer all right um and then i'm going to put that it's required um on it as well so i want to share it then i'm just going to do one um question for the purposes of the demo so when i click on share um Dependent on um, actually, well, if you're using stream um, they will have to have an Office 365 account. So only people in my organization can respond is fine. I'm going to copy the link. And then if I come back to stream, I can paste my URL in here. And then it is. Um, text formatting quiz. OK, and I want to add it to the timeline at about, let me see, move that along. At about here, but you can add you can add multiple forms um, through this. Um, completely, completely up to you. So you could have a five minute video with three quizzes in there if, if you wanted to. Um, there's just different examples. So you can see here position on timeline at 57 seconds. So I'm going to go ahead and add to the timeline. OK, so that that quiz will now come up when it's playing. OK. So you can see there the little kind of the little circle on it where my where my quiz is. So that only comes up as they're watching the video then. It's not a thing at the end. Like, like exactly. When they did with the YouTube and the forum, she embedded the YouTube video into a forum. Yes, that's questions. Um, a little bit different. Same, same idea, different way of doing it. I like yeah. that students have to watch the video to get to the quiz. Um, yeah. You know, so there's there's just different ways of doing it. Um, but my my internet again is not playing ball there, but that does work. Um, I I promise. If I try and give it a refresh. Yeah. OK. No, not playing ball. OK, but it, it does work. So if you wanted to add that to your team, then if you click on share. Um, you have the, the URL here that you can copy out. Copy out, close. And then down to your team that you have. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead with with this channel that I have here. So you could put it in if you wanted as a comment or if you wanted to kind of draw attention to it and make it really accessible and um, you can add it to to a tab at the top. Click on stream. OK, it's a video. 
So paste it. There we go and save. And I've also selected there that it will actually um, do a post to the to the channel as well. And how do you make that a folder of streams then? And the mix of the folder of stream and Flipgrid? OK, so basically to merge the two of them together, if you download your videos out of Flipgrid, you can upload them again into stream. That's one option. OK. And um, the other thing that you could do is have two video channels at the top. Again, it, it depends on what they are. Like for me, I know it will be different topics that I will be working on if I was using the different tools, if that makes sense. Yeah. So then it wouldn't matter because I would be putting my Flipgrid channel into a channel on Teams, but then my stream channel will be going in on a different thing, but I would still add them to the top as a channel. Um, so to do that, click on the plus. And when I went in there to stream, You just keep it on channel and use the URL for the channel. And then again, you can do the exact same thing with Flipgrid. Um, you can add a, um, a topic and um, grid to Flipgrid and share your videos. And again, if you're doing that, um, if you don't want students to respond, you can freeze those topic grids. Um, but you can also have students respond in video responses if you want as well. So it depends on how you want to use it. OK, so the channel sets up a folder of Flipgrid and a folder of streams. Yeah. OK. Yeah. OK, so that's that. Coming back across, so screen recording with PowerPoint. Using stream with forms. OK, so a learning playlist. I have an example of one here and um, this is something that you could send students home with um, as well. Just going to get rid of one page there just to tidy it up a little bit. OK, so a learning playlist. Basically, I have four different activities here that I want students to do. Um, and this is for the asynchronous or the away home activities, um, you know, for during a topic, if that makes sense. So you've already introduced it. They've completed the initial activities that you want. This is more so for during the teaching and learning of that of that topic. And um, so the, the main activities. So I have um, four things that I want students to do over a week in their own time. So this because it's a playlist, they choose the order when or where oh, my video finally works. Let's stop that there. They don't need it anymore. And come back to here. So I have four activities here and I've just embedded them into my OneNote page. So if you wanted to, you could distribute this to students own sections in Class Notebook if you're using Class Notebook and, um, you know, or there's different ways of, of creating it and um, you could kind of make it in Word or PowerPoint, export it to a PDF. And they would still have the interactivity there with the with the live links and um, if it was in a PDF. I like it in OneNote, that's why I have it in here, but it's not the only way to do it. Um, OK, so I have a video here that I want them to watch. I also want them to go on and complete a module on um, the Rata type typing tutor. That's number two. I want them to take a typing test to find out their words per minute. And then I want them to complete a data entry activity. So they just in their own um, either Word document or OneNote, depending how you have it set up. And um, I want them to enter this and time um, their their activity. So that's just the example of of how you would set up a learning playlist and um, with activities. Now you can also kind of give them an option to complete three of the four activities and um, so they have a real choice just a different a different way of of looking at it. Okay, doke. And then oh, just yeah, so on the playlist then how would you record their learning? So what what I would ask them to do, which I just didn't have time to to type in there before I came on this morning, and um, because I've set it up in OneNote, I would ask them to put the screenshots for each activity on the right hand side. 
Thanks. Um, if that makes sense. But that will be through distribution of sending this page to their own um, student section within Class Notebook. Yeah, or making an assignment. In yeah, teams. could be yeah. could be an assignment in Teams, or yes. it could it could also be however else you plan on collecting work um, yeah. from students. Thank you. No problem. So the other thing I just wanted to very quickly look at then was an idea for reflecting on a, a learning experience, and hopefully this will load for me. Just going to refresh that again. OK, so I've set this up in Flipgrid. So it's using the Gibbs model of reflection. So I've asked them to record a video to reflect on their learning. And um, so this could be a lab activity completed in, in class. It could be a skills demonstration. Um, you know, it, it could be a kind of a, a practical of creating smoothies in, in food and nutrition. Um, it could also be kind of creating an artifact in, in woodwork or something else. Some of, some of the hands on kind of activities or skill development um, or kind of practicing some kind of a competency. But basically what they have to do in their Flipgrid video, they have to record a response and describe the learning experience. What were their thoughts about it or their feelings? Evaluate the experience, both good and bad analyze the situation and then conclude their learning or what they could have done differently or what they will do differently next time around. Um, so that just gives them um, the link then to go and record their own response and that will land on my video grid in Flipgrid. So that's how I collect their creation off them. But again, this is a really nice activity to send students home with um, because the app um, is available for both Apple and Android phones and it's really easy to use. It's also free. And um, the other way around it, if students don't have any internet access at home at all, is you give them the activity, they record their video on their phone, so not using any um, internet or Flipgrid camera, and then when they come back in centre, they upload um, their video onto the platform before class. So there's two ways around that. OK, so I think I have shown everything that I want to that I want to show here in this session. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing um, my screen. I'm going to come back to the session. And just for the last kind of questions or a very quick chat, I'm going to turn off the recording. So thank you to anyone who's going to watch this back.